Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. Uh, you made it through another week. I hope you had a great week. Um, I had a fantastic week. Uh, uh, this Wednesday, we did our uh, Long Island Antique Tool Meet, and it was just a fantastic time. Uh, we'll be getting to talk about that more in a couple minutes. Uh, I just wanted to first off thank you for all your help on the last video when I was asking for your help about my crazing acrylics, you know, the acrylics for making the screwdrivers crazing and the epoxy. I had so many great uh, comments and we had a discussion and back and forth and um, a few different things to talk about. But one of the things that uh, I ordered some different drill bits because, uh, you know, when you get a regular drill bit, drill bits usually come in two sizes, usually like uh, two different um, angles for the drill, but are general per considered general purpose. 118 degrees and 135, they're basics, you know, co most common. And, you know, it's funny, we use them for so many things, but for sp specific, <laughs> specific materials like plastics, copper, brass, uh, masonry, they make specific drill bits. They even make them, you know, if you really get into like the aerospace industry, they have specific grinds for each individual material you're drilling. So uh, we get away with, you know, the 118 or the 135 degree drill bits are very common. So that's why we use them for a range of materials, but it's not always the best. And uh, for plastics, it definitely generated a little bit more heat than I would have liked. And I think when you generate that kind of heat, you open up some micro uh, cracks in, in the acrylic. And, and then when I was cleaning it with the alcohol, prepping it with the alcohol, I might have, uh, you know, done some damage you know, with the crazing part. Uh, although I didn't mind the way it looked, I'm just worried about long term, uh, you know, survivability, how it's going to hold up if you should drop it. I don't want it to be fragile, you know. So I really appreciate we had a great discussion. I'm going to do a second batch, keeping the epoxy down, using more of a press fit and some heat like some of you suggested instead of the glue. I think we got this one nicked in the bud. So I really appreciate it. So let's talk about uh, the tool meet. It was such a great time. So many people showed up. Everybody was there and I took some footage. Let's check that out. Now, even though I got there early, apparently some hooligans got there before me. And, uh, but it was nice because Dan got there early. We did a little show and tell and we were able to, uh, to get started right away. And look at this dollar table. Can you imagine everything on this table is a dollar? How could you beat that? And, uh, the, the show was just absolutely great. A lot of great dealers there and a lot of great people came down to uh, check it out. We had a ton of fun. Tony brought down a beautiful vintage Arctic Navy sled, had phenolic runners. Even the Patina boys managed to stop down and bring some stuff. Now, uh, as you know, I have uh, stopped buying tools. I don't buy tools anymore. But I have to tell you, there are a lot of enablers at that club. And it's very difficult when you, uh, when you go there and you're surrounded by like-minded people. And sometimes you fall off the wagon. I, I kind of fell off the wagon a little bit. Late. Not crazy. But a little bit and I picked up a couple things and, and then there's always some generous people that bring stuff to uh, to give and we'll get to that in the week and a week coming but uh, let me show you what I picked up uh, just a couple things I think you might find interesting now this is just the hand tools that I purchased okay I purchased a couple electric tools but this is the hand tools and a lot of these some of them came off the dollar table like this one Mike another enabler 
said, boy, I bet you could do something nice with that. But this is a real challenge because these are proud of the of the inserts here. But it is an interesting <laughs> screwdriver. And it, it has a ton of use. It can't be too old because of the shaft. I don't know. Interesting. Um, got this big big ball peen from Kent. Kent is a great guy. And Kent gave me a bunch of stuff, but he had this on his table. And uh, and I figured we would do this one up nice. He said it was a Bonnie. So uh, also got this from Kent. These I love these you, these type of scissors. And I'll tell you how these work when we do them up. But uh, great stuff. But And, you know, plies, typical stuff. Got this uh, from Bruce. You know, Bruce practically gave this and the tap handle. Practically gave it to me. But we, we can have some fun with that, right? These are always interesting and uh go no go gauges which you'll find very interesting when we talk about these and look at this huge tap handle uh this is for i, I need to do some 440 taps in stainless steel that's just a joke obviously but uh look at this this is pretty interesting huh look at that size of this i never seen one this big you know that i could afford and uh got that from roger gave me a really good price on that at uh he, he wanted $15. Come on. How can you how can you beat that? You know, so great guys, great people, a lot of fun. And uh, this is the hand tools. I Next up, my good friend Brian O'Hare, who I promised would remain anonymous. Um, he gave me this. Look at this awesome, awesome DeWalt. You ready for this? This motor miter box. Now I've had I have three radio alarm saws. <laughs> never liked them but this is just this is an amazing piece of work we're going to go through this we're going to do a cleanup on it this week but i'm just giving you a sneak peek how awesome is this piece of work huh you ever seen anything like this before okay, next up i just have to share this one electrical item i bought this is <laughs> you know what this is right <laughs> we'll call it a lab drill even though they call it dental drills or whatever i've never seen one before uh, how cool is this with all the pulleys and you see what it says here that's the it's a emsco uh engine but uh that's the base here i have a old dremel tabletop speed control that i hooked it into and uh again now i'll show you how we hook this up and Maybe we can do some dental work. Okay, so if you've never seen a dental drill, which I never did until yesterday, uh, you have a base here with a motor. It has a, a pulley, and this rope, or they call it a drive belt, goes up around the set of pulleys here. It's one continuous loop that goes around and goes back. So, And then you take it off here, and you can see it's articulated, okay, so that you can use... I, I don't, this is the strangest thing I ever saw. You know, and now to uh, to put the bit in, you just hold the pulley here, loosen this up here. That's like the collet adjuster. Place this one here is just a bit that it's a little bit bent, but it should work. And then tighten it up here. And now that's that's your brush on here. Now let's turn it on and uh, check this out. Now I'm using, like I said, the vintage speed controller. So we'll turn it on. I oiled all the pulleys. Can you see that? I mean, just look at this. Look at the RPMs you get, and it's very smooth. You see how it has, you know, what kind of motion, range of motion it has, and, uh, you know, why you would want this situation, I don't know, but it's just the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I love it. Now with the speed control, you could knock this down to pretty much a crawl. And I could see where they come, but you know, I'm just going to give it a little bit more oiling because it, I'm sure it hasn't been oiled in forever. So, but that is just so interesting, isn't it? I love okay, it. Okay, next up, uh, remember last episode we did this beautiful uh, tool that I didn't know really what it was. And I, I uh, Jimmy and Lisa Campanella contacted me. Jimmy is an old time body man, and a lot of you had it right. Uh, now, that doesn't mean you can't use this this particular tool for a hundred different things, but what they used it for with Jimmy, Jimmy is an old time body guy. And. Uh, you know, and so this is what it was, it was a body pick. You get in between, you wedge between panels and pull dents out and things like that. And it was made for body uh, work. Now, for the guys that said manhole cover, 
I do have a manhole cover tool if you'd like to see it. It's but it's like three feet long and it's like three times as thick. But it's there cool, you know, if you ever have to go down a manhole for any reason, if you drop your keys or whatever. So uh thanks again, Jimmy. But it's um, thanks everybody. You had such great comments about this. I really hey, appreciate last it. Stuff real quick, uh wanted to talk about the Captain America screwdriver. I tried to knock out a uh just one of the prototypes for that. But I, I got to show it to you with a base. I can't. I, ju I just can't. You know, lay it on it. I got to show you with a base. So, I thought, how cool would it be if we made a little Captain America shield base? So I took a piece of pine. Let's do it real quick. Okay, so here we go. This is the first Captain America prototype. I made this one. Now, you know, it's funny. When we I went to the show yesterday, I was passing around the screwdrivers, and everybody liked different things. Like, I had a long one like this. I gave it Tom Gunn. Loved the long one. And then I, I, I said, put your hand up. Guy's got gorilla mitts. <laughs> His hands are bigger than mine. I was like, oh my God. He's like, yeah, I like. So anyway, so I, I have to make them in all different lengths depending on your hands. So uh, this is it. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. And uh, and then, like I said, I made a little shield. Now I'm going to get a, a white star to put in the middle. But uh, there we go. There's your Captain America on his, uh, on his little stand there. Pretty cool, right? Well, I tell you, I'm having a lot of fun with these. Okay, so in closing, we covered quite a bit today. And uh, just a heads up for anybody that might be in the New Jersey area tomorrow, Saturday, April 30th, 2022, uh, at uh, Oldwick, New Jersey. My New Jersey guys like 805 Road King and 357 Magdad, Paul's Workshop. There's a whole bunch of you guys. Uh, Crafts, C-R-A-F-T-S, it's a acronym. They're having a, a, a tool auction but they also have a, a tailgating a, a show beforehand you know like a flea market for tools very good uh turnout usually a bunch of great tools i i picked up a lot of cool stuff there in previous shows but that'll be uh tomorrow but you got to get there early you know it's from uh 6 a.m to like about 8 30 9 o'clock is when most of the selling goes on so if you're an early bird and you're in the area stop by i think you'll enjoy it for the rest of you, I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Take advantage of it, and thanks so much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>